Um, our first speaker is Dr. Abhishek Das from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. And Abhishek is going to talk about evaluation of a novel innate CXCL8 effect T cell in neonatal bacterial infection. Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to speak here today. So my name is Abby. I'm an infectious diseases registrar and I have a background in immunology. And today I'd like to tell you a story about a, a, a particular type of T cell which is abundant in the neonate but not the adult and why we think it's important and some initial clues as to its potential roles in sepsis. So let's start with the big picture, neonatal sepsis. We know it's a huge global um, issue and if you look at all deaths in children under age of five, 47% occur in the first 28 days of life, and of those deaths, one-third are due to infections. That's meningitis, pneumonia, and sepsis. And this equates to 3,500 deaths per day, which is a huge amount. What's important to point out is a large number of these are potentially preventable. So why study the neonatal immune system? Well, the neonatal immune system is a toolkit and what we may be able to do by understanding the basic immunobiology is in dysregulated states such as bacterial infection, look for immune signatures and biomarkers of infection. And we're doing this now in adults for TB versus uh, latent TB, for example. And in addition to that, we can start thinking about improving management. Now, um, these concepts are a little way off, but um, what we're looking to do is to augment the immune system at the same time as giving antibacterial therapy, because we've got a rise in antimicrobial resistance, uh, as you know, and if you go to an intensive care unit over here, um, somewhere on a neonatal intensive care unit, those first broad spectrum antibiotics that we use will be less and less effective over time. So I'm going to talk to you about the neonatal response, but let's start with the adults. And I'm going to focus on T cells in this talk. So this is a prototypic adult T cell response. What we've done is we've taken um, peripheral blood cells from an adult, activated them, and looked for cytokines, including interleukin-17, which is important for extracellular pathogens, and interferon gamma, which is important for intracellular pathogens, for example, listeria in neonates. And this is a flow cytometric dot plot, and every dot represents a single cell. And you can see a cloud of both gamma and R17. But contrast this to a typical neonate. These, uh, in these individuals, these responses are devoid. And really, this slide summarizes what we thought about T cell immunology over the last 30 years, that T cells just simply could not mount these responses vis-a-vis -vis they were more likely to get neonatal sepsis. But should we really think about the neonatal immune response the same way? Surely the challenges are completely different. Within seconds of birth, you're thrust upon a microbiome with thousands and billions of bacteria, some of which are harmful, some of which are not. At the same time, you're dealing with your own antigens versus other non-self antigens and autoimmunity. And at the same time, while you're mounting a costly, in terms of energy, sepsis response, you have to, you have to uh, prioritize your organ development. So this might make you think that the qualitative response in an neonate shouldn't necessarily be the same as that as an adult. And indeed, it's not. So in our lab, we were the first to show that rather than being anti-inflammatory or immature, neonatal T cells produce a large amount of a pro-inflammatory chemokine called CXEL8. In this representative neonate, it's about 23%. And then if you look at preterm or term as represented by cord blood, you can see that the percentage of T cells producing CXEL8 is about a quarter, up to half of these cells, whereas the percentage is actually quite low in the adult. So this is a distinct phenotype within the neonatal T cell. So what does CXCL8 do? Well, we know that it activates neutrophils and attracts them to sites of infection. We also know that it activates gamma delta T cells, which live at epithelial surfaces and sense stress. So perhaps a hypothesis is that these T cells, which are in abundance, are your first innate like defense against infection, and your paramedics or your first responders prior to your, innate, uh, your adaptive immune responses developing. So to test this question, first of all, we need to understand the biology of these cells, where they come from, their thymic origins, and what happens to them, because we don't see many in the adult. And secondly, we can start to tease apart their function in the context of bacterial infection. So in terms of the methodology, the first thing we did was we, took, we got thymus samples and cord blood samples, isolated the thymocytes and cord blood T cells, activated them, and looked at their functional profiles via flow cytometry. So if you take a thymus and you activate the thymocytes, um, what you can see is that a proportion of them produce CXEL8, but not very much interferon gamma, as summarized in this plot here. So the message here is that um, CXEL8 is produced very early on in T cell development within the thymus. So these thymocytes then develop and come out into the periphery. And as you know, we have about 
25% of the cells in the neonate producing CXAL8 here, but about 4% in the adult. So what happens over time? Do they just die off in apoptose? Or are they converting to your conventional interferon gamma producing effectors, for example? <clears throat> and the, we think the latter is the case, and we published this last year. So I'm going to explain to you what we've done in this experiment. We've taken a single CXCL8 producing T cell, and we've cloned it, so we've activated it. And over 35 days, one CXCL8 producing T cell has become two, which has become four, which has become eight. And here, you can see thousands of its progeny. And if you activate them at this stage, you can now see that 94% of them are producing interferon gamma. So this is a novel pathway of Th1 help cell development. So now, I want to give you some preliminary data as to potential roles in bacterial infection. So we have, are lucky enough to have um, access to blood samples from neonates on the intensive care units, some of whom have culture-proven sepsis. I want to draw your attention first to the green line, which is CRP, in one neonate with E. coli bacteremia and one with Klebsiella bacteremia. And you can see the undulations there. And now here we have the blue line, which is the T cell, CD4 T cell CXCL8 production over time. And the first thing I'd like to suggest is that CXCL8 fluctuates. And the second thing I'd like to suggest is perhaps, in some cases, this mirrors the inflammatory changes. But these are CD4 T cells that are swimming around in the blood. What about within tissue, in situ? Well, this is a, a section uh, of, uh, where we've done immunohistochemistry chemistry from a baby with necrotizing enterocolitis. And within inflamed gut, what you can see here is a brown cell, which is a CD3 T cell, and this orangey red substance around it, which is CXCL8. So we can pinpoint that T cells are producing CXL8 within inflamed tissue. Of course, this isn't ref referring to infection um, in this slide. So to summarize, we've identified a novel uh, CXL8 producing T cell, which is abundant in the neonate. Uh, its origins are within the thymus in the early thymus site development. And these cells go on to become interferon gamma producing cells. And we've also looked at IL-4 and um, other cytokines like IL-10, and they also form these cells as well. Their implication in disease is that because they are so abundant during this early time period, perhaps they may be, have a function in infection, and we can certainly see them at inflamed tissue sites. And in our preliminary studies, and we've looked at about 10 examples, I'm showing you one here, um, there may be a correlation with uh, inflammatory state in bacterial sepsis. So the wider implications and the take-home messages. Neonatal responses are not immature or anti-inflammatory as we once thought, and there's a slew of papers now which have now confirmed that. This gives us the opportunity to re-evaluate vaccine adjuvant design and also neonatal-specific immunotherapies by re-evaluating the neonatal pathways and then trying to augment them with the benefit of trying to reduce our reliance on antimicrobials alone and to reduce mortality in the long term. And that leads me to thank my supervisor, Dina Gibbons, Adrian Hady, and Shrada at the King's College. Um, also, all of my other collaborators, all the patients, and many thanks to the Academy of Medical Sciences for providing me with a clinical starter grant. Many thanks. Okay, questions? Yes. Thank you, that was very lovely. Um, all of these responses are PMA and mycin driven, and you can sort of argue in the adult there's been more priming based on TCR activation. This is a super physiological response. So, do, I mean, can you reproduce this data with, uh, with anti CD328 to actually, um, uh, f for instance, bacterial lysates? Um, uh, yeah, yes, absolutely. So we, we've um, reproduced it with CD3, CD28. Uh, and the responses aren't quite as marked, but you still get um, a CXCL8 respond in the 10, so 10 or 20%. We can also reproduce it with flagellin, um, so a, a toll-like receptor agonist stimulus. I, I'm presuming that the IL-8 that they secrete is preformed. Uh, so, but do you know that for sure? And I'm also assuming that you've done a qPCR analysis as these cells develop. So. What's the signature there? Um, yeah, yes, sir, absolutely. They are um, uh, preformed um, because you can um, stimulate and look within an hour or two and you get quite a, a vast amount of CXL8 production. The, um, we've done single cell RNA sequencing um, at baseline, so not at the time point of bacterial infection. And um, CXL8 at baseline is um, <laughs> part of the Ray signature, along with other inflammatory chemokines like CCL4 and CCL3. We haven't yet done a time course of CXCL8 and when uh, 
the, the changing time uh, over a few hours. So that's something we can do. Thank you very much. Can you um, just briefly allude the, the next steps in terms of how you see this go for therapy and can you predict how long it's going to be before you might have an effective agent? Um, so, so the second point, I think it's going to be a little while. And what we're doing now is, um, from the preliminary data I showed you, we've recruited 117 neonates from the Homerton Neonatal Intensive Care Unit who've been long to sampled. Um, we get about 300 to 400 microliters of blood per time point. And so we're doing a more <clears throat> unbiased transcriptomic and uh, flow cytometry analysis with three 12 color panels. So, in addition to CXCL8, we're looking for other biomarkers, particularly at the early time points of early onset sepsis to see if we can predict that. In terms of the, the therapies, neonatal therapy as a neonatal immunotherapy doesn't really exist so far as, I mean, we have IVRG, for example, but that's about it. And the, the goal would be, if you take adult cancer, for example, to have a um, number of checkpoint inhibitors, like to characterize PD-1, CTLA-4, and use our existing tools to see whether they are useful in subverting the neonatal responses. However, we first need to characterize the expression of those molecules. Can I, can I ask you, so this has implications for vaccination of, of neonates, and of course we vaccinate neonates quite a lot against various things. Has, have people looked at the immune response after vaccination, and, and, and when do you think we should defer vaccination until? Thank you, that's a good question. Um, so, um, yes, so, so mo most vaccinations start at two months. There are some vaccines which you can use in the neonatal period, like BCG, hepatitis, or polio. And interestingly, with BCG, as far as I'm aware, the Th1, the interferon gamma response, doesn't necessarily correlate with their, um, the vaccine response. So it's perhaps that um, we are not using the right adjuvant. So alum, for example, gives you more of a Th2 balance. And if we know what effector pathways are inherent to the neonate, we may be able to synergize those and therefore bring some more of the vaccines to an earlier time period. Any more questions? No? Great, thank you very much, thank you.